Thanks for joining us today on the Big Blue Podcast. I'm Greg Stone, Metro Campus Provost, here with our president, Dr. Lee Goodson. President Goodson, how are you today? I'm doing great. How are you, Dr. Stone? I am really well, especially because our guest here in the McKeon Center for Creativity is Professor Mary Wells Phillips, Associate Professor of Biology at the Southeast Campus. Mary, thanks for coming over and talking with us today. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad to be here today. Well, um, and just sort of checking out your faculty webpage, there's something that you wrote on your webpage that I want to ask you about. So I'm going, to, I'm going to quote you to you. And you wrote this. I believe curiosity drives all learning. This underlying theme has not changed in the 30 years I've taught biology. I try to stimulate curiosity and interest in all my courses. So I'm wondering how that philosophy of teaching and learning has kept you grounded during your teaching career. How did that teaching philosophy come about? Well, I, I would say that there there are three words that I really have embraced, and that's curiosity, spirit, and opportunity. Um, I think that we're all curious. I think students want to learn. I think faculty want to learn. Um, and I think uh, we have to nourish and encourage the spirit of the learner as well as provide the opportunities that they need. So those are my three driving words. And, of course, you know I get those from the three rovers that are on Mars opportunity, spirit, and curiosity. Mm. So um, I, I draw a lot of analogies for the, the rover curiosity as well as our own curious nature. So uh, Mary, you have an incredible reputation with students for providing some amazing learning opportunities. And I've just, I've heard firsthand from some of your students the experiences that they've had in your classroom. How do you stay innovative and creative in the classroom. You've been teaching for a while, and so how do you keep coming up with new ideas all the time? You know, there's a big <laughs> pause. Uh, <laughs> I, I think it, it, it really, I take my leads from my students. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, I have great colleagues. And, you know, we have uh, opportunities to travel and, and to go to conferences and to learn from one another. And so all of, all of the readings and, and everything that, uh, you know, one exposes oneself to really help stimulate my own curiosity and my own creative uh, abilities to bring it back to the classroom. But basically... I take the leads from the students. Every semester is slightly different because they're slightly different. And they're ever-changing. And they're changing. Even though it's the same subject, every year says, don't you get tired? And I go, no, I don't get tired because my students are different. And, and so the emphasis might be a little different. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good. You know. Well, you've, you've won a number of teaching awards. You've won our Faculty Teaching and Excellence Award. <clears throat> but I want to ask you about an award you won in 2013, which was U.S. Professor of the Year Award by the Carnegie Foundation for the Advancement of Teaching and the Council for Advancement and Support of Education. That's an amazing honor. And I'm just wondering what that award meant to you professionally and personally. Because I remember, I remember when word came out about that, that there was just talk everywhere uh, uh, among the campuses. I was, I was still teaching as a faculty member here at Metro, and, and people were just talking about that. I mean, that's a huge honor. It had to have really been a special moment for you. It was very humbling. You know, it, it really, truly was an honor, privilege uh, uh, to be um, uh, representing TCC for something that I love to do. And that award is for teaching and mentorship. And that's been really my life here. Uh, but I do want to share that more than that award is the letters that were shared with me. And one of them was from a former student. And I love the story. I don't, you know, if we don't have time, just no, let please, me know. Please, please we please have do. time. But, um, you know, she wrote a letter that in 1982, she was in my biology class. And I thought, 1982? I was just beginning. That must have been a bad class. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But she said that, you know, that I made nematodes interesting. And uh, she was a single parent with four children. Mm -hmm coming back to school or, or really did not have a direction and then she had the class and decided she would change her major to biology. Eventually uh, she went on to medical school and became a pediatrician. And unbeknownst to me, she became my, child, my grandchildren's pediatrician. So, and then later I had her daughter in my class again. So, so 
more than the award, it is knowing that, wow, along the way, you may not know you've touched someone or you've impacted someone, but definitely that means a lot to me. You know, that, 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 that means a lot. That's a great story. That is that's a, a great, great story. That's a good story. One of my favorites. You know, I have yeah. several, but that was one of my favorites. <laughs> I have to have you back again so you can tell us more. <laughs> you know. Well, I'm Lee Goodson here with my co-host, Dr. Greg Stone, and you're listening to the Big Blue Podcast today. Our guest is Associate Professor of Biology, Mary Wells Phillips, and we've been talking about her teaching philosophy and her teaching career. So you've been teaching a while. How have students changed over the last 30 years that you've been teaching biology? And are their needs and challenges the same, or have they changed in significant ways? And tell us what you think about that. And and why? That's a great question. And I thought about that, that, that question, have students really changed? And then I thought about the letter from 1982, single parent, four children, making sacrifices, going to school, want to better themselves, want to get an education. Our students are still the same. Yeah. We still have the same kinds of students coming through with the same vision, the same, um, you know, mission in their lives to get an education, better themselves, and eventually have a career and a job. So then I thought, well, what has changed? So I have a story. So one day we're all standing in our hallway, and they start putting these machines in our office. <laughs> and we're saying, what's that? Those are computers. Mm. Desktop computers. <laughs> Computer, you know, not yes. every, everybody first, has their own, though. You know, in yeah. the office many, many, many years ago. When they, and then we said, what are we going to do with them? And they said, you're going to email. And I said, email? No, it's going to take too long. I'm just going to keep calling. <laughs> and so now, who, you know, who calls? Nobody I mean, every, calls anymore. I miss it. Emails. So then I thought, no, students haven't changed, but the way we deliver what we deliver has changed. They, they do want more flexibility. They want to be more engaged. They want to have a say. Mm -hmm. they, they want to have a say in a say in, in, in a sense that, that it's important for them to connect and for the material to be relevant. And I think there's more of that emphasis now. I've seen as I have, again, uh, you know, reflected on these 30 years, and, and I would say uh, students want more flexibility. Of course, technology has changed. Uh, not, not how they are, but how we deliver mm -hmm. and how we connect with them. I want to know, too, what's one thing that you wish that all students knew about their faculty members? And then what's the thing that you wish all faculty members knew and recognized about their students? And not necessarily just at TCC, but, but in general. That's a great question. I mean, all the questions are great. They, they've been great. One thing. So I had to pick one thing. Oh, we, have, we have time for a couple yeah, of no, you. No, 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 I, you know, I, I, think, I think the one thing is great. You've been a very efficient guest. Uh, be, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think that all students need encouragement and faculty need encouragement. So if I can pick one thing is everyone, uh, you know, whether you're encouraging your students, students are encouraging faculty, administration is encouraging faculty, faculty are encouraging other faculty. I think that is one thing that uh, is, is the least uh, numerator, if I can say, denominator, uh, is that um, we, um, you know, ev everyone needs uh, encouragement to keep going. Because mm -hmm. it, it's hard work, right? And all work worth doing is hard work. It's, it's hard work, but if you're passionate about the hard work, then it's not so much hard work. It's just ways that you can be more effective, ways that you can connect with students, you know, um, a little more. Mm -hmm. And not everyone is a, a major. So I've had some of my non-majors uh, as well, and ooh, you have to f <laughs> you have to find ways to connect them, um, for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's usually harder than the majors. Yeah, a bit. We have a final question that we ask every guest, 
and that is if you could go back and give advice to your 18-year-old self, what would it be? That's a great question. I'm um, telling you these questions. <laughs> <laughs> they are good that's questions. A, just, just that's, that's a great, a, uh, great question. Um, and really, um, I would say to myself, take piano lessons. <laughs> oh, know? I like that answer. <laughs> I do too. We've never gotten that answer uh, before, take, Greg. Take piano lessons. I, I was very focused. I, I picked, I selected a great undergraduate school. I went to Occidental College. Mm, and, wow. Um, uh, and, and I still have lifelong friends from college that I made. And uh, it was a, a, a wonderful learning environment. So I think, you know, if I were giving this advice just in general for 18-year-olds, you know, choose your college wisely mm -hmm. and, and then get to know your professors, mm -hmm. you know, just, just really get to know your instructors, connect, because I think it'll be easier for them to ask questions, to feel like they're part of, of that community. And Can then I? take piano lessons. Yes, and in there fact, I'm taking that advice now as I signed up for piano lessons this nice. semester. Oh, that's nice. awesome. <laughs> That's really awesome. Can I be unorthodox and throw in an extra question? Absolutely. Just because I'm curious, how did you become a biology major? Was that something you always knew you wanted to do, or did you discover that? Or That's a great question. Uh, you know, my, I, I, I'm I just, a former newspaper reporter, know, so I'm glad that I can still ask some, that's some a good great questions. Question. And, and really, it was my 10th grade biology teacher at Hollywood High School. Students like to know that I graduated from Hollywood oh, wow. High. And uh, she was just very inspirational and a great mentor. And um, once I saw my first Euglena under the microscope, I just knew that's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to teach high school. That was my, my goal, was to be just like her. So I modeled myself after Mrs. Koff was her name. Wow. So yes, I was very, very focused when I went to college. Well, Mary Wells Phillips, thank you for um, your time and for sharing some good stories and, and sitting down to talk. And congratulations on um, all your success in the classroom. And thanks for being a great model and colleague for a lot of other people over the years. So thank you so much. And thank you all for listening to the Big Blue Podcast. Remember that you can catch the podcast each week in the week at TCC and on the Creativity Channel on YouTube. Dr. Goodson, we'll good see to you see you. Time. See you next time. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Okay, thank you.